is our last module and I wanted to get into this because I felt it is most important to finish on some sort of note of what is the actual true purpose of strength conditioning. This would be the hardest thing you'll have to answer at a certain point in your career. Do you really find purpose and meaning in what you do? It's a tough question, but we're going to try to dive into it in a couple ways that I've worked through, and I work through with a lot of actually my coaches and, men and mentees as I go through their careers with them. So we're going to dive into these big, really high-level topics, and hopefully we come out of it a little bit better, a little bit more perspective, maybe realign purpose and meaning with what we're doing. Finding purpose with anything you're doing is not easy. As I look through my career and I look through the phases I've been through, which I've talked about in the team versus private, as well as a lot of other modules, there's always these moments of, is what I'm doing really what I was destined to do? I think everyone feels that. And I think everyone really understands that. And we put a little cycle in there in looking at this career. It's the, the wisdom we gain from time served based off the work that we're doing. I think in the process of becoming a strength coach to being a strength coach to asking some hard questions at certain points of your career, like what is a strength coach and why am I doing this? It really comes down to have we acquired enough wisdom from putting in enough work to really, really answer that and really truly understand that. I think as a process of looking at your career in anything, you could be a teacher, you could be an accountant, you can just be anything in the world, you will always face this dilemma, this crossroads, this feeling of, I don't know if this is what I really tended to do, but I have a lot of sunk cost and a lot of things. That's why I always tell folks, go back to what you can control and focus on that. And focus on what you can do on a daily, weekly, monthly, annual basis regardless. Go back all the way to, hey, I want to become a strength coach. I don't really know what path to take, but I can start working out. I can start reading. It's funny how cyclical this all really is. When's the last time you opened a book? When's the last time you were excited to go through a program or to get a lift in? If you've lost that, it's going to be really hard to find purpose and meaning with your job. And I think that's the part you really need to come to grips with. That you should be excited. Not every day is going to be a 10 in terms of actual performance in the weight room. But generally speaking, that still should be a really big part of your life. It should still be a really, really important part of your day. And as you look through the process of finding purpose and meaning in anything, it really is just a consistent and continued work that you're doing. Meaning and purpose is a relative term. That if I'm doing something that's directly impacting someone else in a positive way, there is there's purpose if I'm doing it in a way that completes me and allows me to provide for my family and doing something that I really enjoy, there's meaning. And I, or there's purpose and there's meaning. And as I look through those two things and I start to evaluate the bigger picture of going to work, coaching groups, programming, setting up, breaking down, putting in numbers into Excel, going through all the other nuanced things of strength conditioning on a daily basis, there's mundane, trivial, unnecessary parts of the job, and then there's really exciting, very challenging, very thought-provoking aspects of the job. And each is going to require a different skill set. It's, I think it's really interesting. The, the process, and this is why I put in there the work, is leads into the wisdom because it's funny how cyclical, and I'll tell you this from everyone I know who's reached a point of being a head strength coach. It's the decision fatigue associated with the job. You always make decisions for the collective. It's constant. It's never ending. You're always on the hook to be the final say, yes or no on everything. And you're going to be challenged. You're going to be questioned. You're going to be looked at in a way that not everyone's always going to want to agree with you or not necessarily be on the same page with you. And that's fine. That's the job. But what you do in that regard is do things that you have a lot of control over, like cleaning. And it's funny how that turns around. Because at the beginning of your career, you despise, you loathe it. You just can't wait to be done with it. You're just checking the box. You're wondering, is this really a good use of your time? Is this the best thing that serves other people? But then you get to a point where you're constantly on the hook for everyone else's 
decisions that they make and things that they do and actions that they have, you crave that moment of just doing checklist, very thoughtless, provoke, thoughtless work that you can do just basically just redundantly and over and over again, like cleaning or organizing or making shakes. And you'll find yourself getting lost in those moments. You know, I could tell you definitively like how much I'm, how much I've really been in these trances when I'm cleaning a weight room or organizing inventory or setting up a lift or breaking it down. These are the few moments I have where I don't have to effectively tell everyone every single thing they need to do on any given day. Now, I wanted that and I, chat and I love that opportunity to help and support and guide others. That's why I came out with this course. But it's amazing the, the wisdom that I now have from going through the process of doing that and the appreciation for not always having to be the thought or the answer for every single person out there that I, I meet. And make no bones about it. That's the trajectory you go in strength conditioning. You go into management. You go into sales. You go into different rungs of this profession that, quite frankly, might take you away from what really you want to do. And that's when I go, okay, like, I can still write myself a badass program. I can still read a book that I don't really know about. I can go to a course that I don't really know anyone there. I can start to meet other coaches that might be doing a great job that are doing it in a way that's compelling and interesting and exciting and they just it creates a, a renewed spirit as we go through the profession and finding purpose and finding this the meaning to what it all is it's like answering the question what's the what's the point of existence what's the point of life it could be a variance of things it could be this idea of theology and spirituality it could be this idea of just doing a good job and taking pride in your work and being being the best version of yourself you could possibly be it really doesn't doesn't matter really, right? Like you knew you chose this for some intrinsic value that you thought this would be a profession that you could say, I'm gonna make a dent in the universe with, with strength and conditioning. That the best version of myself is one that's on the weight room floor coaching and, and helping others achieve their hopes and dreams. And as I start to go through the process of becoming a coach, it's exciting and it's always new opportunities. The cycle of change from being an intern or an undergrad is immense. It's every, every, every week there's a new thing or a new wrinkle. And then you get into the job and you go, wow, okay, I got to go through HR. I got to find a place to live. I got to find roommates. I got to get, uh, get acclimated to my teams. I get my first camp and I get through all these things. And then you get into that. Second phase, you get fired or you, you find another job and the cycle repeats, it's a little less new, you're a little less excited. And then you get into this, this like third iteration where you're like, oh, maybe I've seen this a bunch and I'm really kind of tired. It's, it's very redundant. It's the same thing. Or maybe I leave and change course and go to the private sector. And I realize once the dust settles, it's the same job. It's just coaching and helping others with things that they're not in, intrinsically motivated or capable of doing. And that's... That's what it really comes down to. It's eventually it's going to hit some sort of apex in terms of interesting or thinking or challenging you and how you handle that peak and how you find purpose after that and understanding what you actually have some sort of control over. You know, I think that's where you go through, okay, like, I love my job. I love who I am. I love what I do. Like being a strength coach could be called a calling if you want. It'd be called anything you want it to be as long as you understand that it gives you purpose and meaning. That that to me is the most important. And don't lose sight of that. Get a lift in. Go read a book. Go coach someone. Do something that makes you realign and understand your purpose and meaning is helping others and doing what others can't do for themselves or won't do for themselves. Like, that's your calling. That's who you are. That's your purpose. A couple jobs later, you'll find something. And I think, too, of, like, don't be afraid to challenge yourself, right? And I talked about in the book, like my father was an engineer, and they started to include computers in the late 60s, early 70s, and a lot of engineers were like, no, I'm not going to change. Strength conditioning has faced that all the time. Sports science, sports nutrition, biomechanics, psychology, everything is rapidly evolving. We're such a, such a new field. And we have so much, so much diversity with what we're required to do or know. Man, as you're breaking it down, you should be finding ways to keep yourself engaged and interested 
at all times. And if you can't find purpose and meaning in a thing that is literally Pandora's box, that is the ability to transform and change the world around you, you should find something else. It's not a like our challenge and like, you know, this isn't for everybody. It's the truth. You know, the higher, higher, slow, fire fast. Like a lot of times when I fire people who are volunteers because they don't have that, that drive, I'm trying to do you a favor because it's going to be a lot of long days and low pay and a lot of thankless, thankless tasks and jobs. And then you get into this point where you're like, you're just craving doing the thankless jobs because you just want that redundancy or you want that little, like that moment of clarity where I don't have to think I can just do. How is that appealing if you don't absolutely love this? How do you, how do you sustain doing this for 30 to 40 years if you're not living, breathing for this? To me, that's where purpose and meaning really comes from. It's diving into that. All right, module tasks, pretty simple. Where do you find yourself bringing the most purpose to those around you? Or where do you find yourself having purpose for those who are people around you? I think that's an important thing to ask. And I know it's a very tough thing to ask. And you might not really have a great answer. And you might never have a great answer. But it's something that you should start to think about. Where do you bring value and purpose for others? That's a really, really good